Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I'm doing a biking tour, and I bumped into Lindsay here. Hello. Lindsay has a homemade DIY camper van, and she's going to tell us all about it today and give us a tour. Lindsay, welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures in South Thank Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Everyone, this is Sylvia. This is my completely do-it-yourself with the assistance of my family home. Um, this is a 2018 Ford Transit. It's a high roof, standard length. There's all sorts of different combinations that you can order when you, when you get your Transit if you find one on the lot. Um, but that's what this one is. So come inside and let's take a look. This is my Dometic fridge and freezer combination. Um, you set the temperature for the freezer and then the cold air spills over into the refrigerator. Lots of space. I can keep food for quite a bit of time. Um, and then underneath here I have a cassette toilet um, that is actually has a manual flush um, so it it's almost like it comfortable as it is at home. Easy to empty in a, a rest stop bathroom or a gas station. Um, shoe storage right here. This is a waterproof waterproof Cortec flooring. Um, also has a layer of cork underneath for some insulation and sound. Helps with sound. These are little baskets um, for storage. I made them so you can easily remove them and access the contents and then pop them back up here. Coming over here, we have my sit stand desk. I have this cool little stool that um, can come up and down that I can sit on or lean against while I'm working at my desk. I have locking storage so I can keep my laptop and other goodies safe as well as store other supplies. Um, I use internet um, with my Verizon hotspot and then I have a cellular extender on the roof that connects to this little WeBoost antenna. Um, so I've actually been able to get a signal in all sorts of different areas I've been traveling. This I can plug into uh, my laptop and it makes it so I can use that as my computer screen. Also serves as entertainment for the seating and sleeping area. Have a little Amazon Fire Stick so I can use that to do Netflix and Hulu, Amazon Prime, and those things. I have um, 12 volt lights that are just touch on, a little night light and reading light. Swivels all around. I have a Max Air remote control fan um, that also serves as a vent um, so I can pull smells and um, steam out while I'm cooking, which is super handy. I have um, the ceiling, pretty proud of this, uh, with two zone dimmer switch for the living area and the kitchen. This is all pine, tongue and groove, super thin and lightweight. Um, helps keep the weight down for the, the overall conversion. This table is amazing. Um, I made the table, but this lagoon mount um, is made for boating and it's being used in a lot of van conversions and RVs because of its versatility. It makes it super easy when you're in a small space to kind of get in and move it up to you and, and have it not be in the way. And then I actually have the ability to move this mount to the outdoors. Um, there is a little bracket right here on the outside of my fridge stand. And so I can set it up to be a standing desk or flip it over and then it's the perfect height for my camping chairs. These benches are comfortable, but they're also full of goodies. All of my storage is under here. And then on this side, I also have storage with a sealed propane locker. So this is tension sealed and it vents in the bottom there with PVC all the way out to the bottom of the van so when the tank um, heats up during the day um, or whenever it's hot and the gas releases, it drops out the bottom. These cushions were, um, I had, <laughs> they're very uniquely made. Um, I had a custom cut at a local foam factory um, in my hometown right outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
And then my dear friend Sarah and her mom um, made all of the covers with this um, outdoor, um, you know, party fabric. I have these magnetic window covers that I bought from a company called Strawfoot based in Southern California. They are amazing. If you're doing a conversion, I highly recommend them. Super easy and super stealthy. Now, is there insulation in the ceilings yes, and walls? There sure is. I have two different types, three different types actually. I have foam board, poly iso. Um, I have great stuff spray foam to kind of seal everything in. And then I have um, thin slate, which looks like kind of a cotton material, but it doesn't absorb moisture. It's a big deal when you're doing a conversion to try to pick materials that don't hold on to moisture. It'll, it'll end up pretty gross in here. Um, so I'm another one of these 12 volt touch lights over here. And then all of this storage above the kitchen can either be accessed by lifting it out, or I made this bar that I can just remove and pull things out that way. I can hold two gallons of drinking water here, my instant pot, which has been getting a lot of use. Now, what is that? How does that power? So I use an inverter, which I have um, in the closet. Um, everything actually that you see other than the instant pot in this computer screen is powered by a 12 volt system. Those are the only two things that I currently have that run off of the inverter. Two burner propane stove that's coming from that um, 11 pound propane tank in the locker. Um, and then this is tin, um, so it is safe um, for being so close to the fire and it also is super easy to clean up um, if you're you know, cooking something that's splattering. Um, I've got outlets really handy in the kitchen so I can use for the Instant Pot. Um, they actually do make quite a few 12 volt kitchen appliances if that's something that you're interested too, so that can be handy. And then this is the, the dimmer switch for the overhead lights. <laughs> Um, this is where all of my kitchen utensils are. Um, this is really nice because it keeps them all separate. Um, I have little slots for the knives and then if you put them back and they're not quite dry, there's a drip tray and so it catches that and you can always empty that later. My spice rack. <laughs> um, got soap and scrub brushes. And then this is my sink. Um, it's very simple, just there's, there's no hot water and it's only operated by this little foot pump. So you can actually get though pretty good water flow with it. And then down here, I have two tanks that are for fresh water. These each hold five and a half gallons of water and then it drains into this five and a half gallon gray tank. Um, and that I can remove to empty or use this little siphon as well. These are all of my kitchen drawers to store all of my goodies. This um, is a push button that locks so then when I'm driving things are opening up. And then this is where I keep a lot of my food. All sorts of goodies in here. Oh, and then these close with magnets. Um, these each hold, uh, they have 60 pounds of pull strength. I have had to add more as I've done driving testing to find out that that wasn't enough. Um, here I keep all of my plates and cups. And here are most of my like cooking supplies. Um, I found that using um, camping supplies is really nice to have in a, a small area. It really has been easy for storage and I haven't found that it's too small um, you know, for my needs. This drawer is a combination of my trash. This is a litter genie um, for a cat litter, but you can open this up and the food or whatever waste drops in and then you seal it off to help control smells. And then this is actually a backpack laundry bag where I keep my dirty clothes. So moving along here, um, this we, uh, my, my dad and I built is completely um, supported by these tension cables as well as an L bracket to the frame in the front. And then this I can easily remove and access all of my bedding and I keep some backpacks and things up here as well. Pillows. All of this glass is wonderful for light but it can be a real pain with temperature either, either cold or heat. Um, so I have this insulated blackout curtain that my mom helped me install magnets on and so I can keep it totally closed off 
um, and that helps with privacy as well as temperature control. I've got a telescoping ladder that I actually was just using earlier today to check on my solar panels. The telescope's down really pretty portably and it goes up ten and a half feet. This is my closet. Um, got these nice little hooks that pop in and out so I can hang my towels and clothes to dry. And then in here, I can store all sorts of things. <laughs> Probably more things than I need, but I've got the room. Um, these drawers are for my clothing. Layers of clothing. I like why you have them all rolled up. Yeah, so I found these, look, the, they actually have little compartments. Um, so it, each one stays in its own little slot. That's been really, really handy. Um, another one that pulls out. And then these pieces of wood actually help form the bed um, along with the table. I just have them stored here. Down here we have most of the guts. Um, this Sterling machine uses the Vans alternator to charge my batteries, which are actually right here. Um, this uses the, or helps pull the energy from the solar panels on the roof to charge the batteries. This is the entire 12 volt system. And then this is my inverter for the 110 volt, which is your more traditional things like the Instant Pot and the computer screen. Just in case some of our viewers are not familiar with uh, different types of batteries. Yeah. This is a Battleborn brand. It looks the, like it's made in the USA. Can you hear a little is, bit about it? It is, yes. Them? These batteries are awesome. If you can see their little motto, get out there, stay out there. Um, it was a big decision because it's a big investment. Lithium is, is more expensive up front, um, but it seems from the reviews that I've read and from the research that I've done that people are truly getting out there and staying out there longer um, because they, they last a long time. I think they have a 10 year warranty on their own. Um, I did have some trouble with the first set of batteries that I ordered for them. Customer service was amazing. Um, they completely helped me set, set new, a new set of batteries that helped me troubleshoot to make sure that the, the first set was defective and it was. They replaced it no problem and I've had no problem since. Here um, I have a battery monitor um, so I can see the, the voltage capacity of my batteries. Um, I can also check this on a Bluetooth app on my phone. This is a remote that turns on my inverter, so if I want to use the Instant Pot or the screen, then I'll just turn that on. And then this is a carbon monoxide and propane gas detector for safety. And if anything goes awry, I can just flip the kill switch. This is that inverter from the side. I noticed a big step up in the back for the, the big bed area. Yeah. Um, what what goes on underneath Good there? Good question. Can we go around to the back and see? One cool feature with the Ford Transit is these doors actually, if there wasn't a pull there, I could open them all the way around and then it magnets right to that side. You're pretty stealth in this spot here. This van... <laughs> no! Can you see where we are right now? We've had all sorts of people coming into this spot behind me and they had no idea I was living in this vehicle. Uh, so this is what I call the garage. This is the reason for this um, step up into the living space. Um, these are industrial slides that I installed and I can fit two bikes, which is super exciting, with actually fairly minimal disassembly. Also have some other clothes in there. But those are, those are what I actually built the entire thing around, the ability to store bikes. That was big. Um, I've got these little uh, switches that I can turn on because at night it's hard to put your bike away in the dark. And then um, I also have access to my bench storage from the back here. If I did need to store anything long, I could store it right through here. And then the other one, because it goes right up against the propane locker, um, is not as deep, so I just keep some smaller things like my hammock and bike helmet, which reminds me, I installed these heavy duty um, brackets and I can put one hammock strap there and one on a tree and then relax right out the back. Also can use it to string a clothesline from here if I need to dry some clothes or inside or outside. What inspired you to build a van versus maybe just going out and buying a travel trailer? Yeah, great question. I actually had looked at a number of pre-made travel trailers um, and RVs. I even went to a convention in my hometown and they're 
really nice. They're very expensive. That was one one reason. But also, I, I kind of was really thinking it and breaking it down a little more, and it just didn't seem practical for like actually living in. It was great for vacationing, but there wasn't a lot of storage. There wasn't really a dedicated workspace. I do work for a living, so I wanted to make sure that, that I had a, um, a space like that. So it was just kind of that, yeah, I just wanted to make it really functional for me, and I hadn't found anything that was already out there. Now, being that this is a homemade camper van conversion, what are some of the challenges that you had? Because this was your first. <laughs> first, and I think my family will say only, at least otherwise I'll have to do it all by myself. Um, so I live in, I, this was built in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, in my parents' driveway. They were kind enough to offer that space and their tools and their time. Um, and one of the biggest challenges we had was weather. Um, extreme temperatures both ways, we found that a lot of adhesives and paints, um, things wouldn't cure in the temperatures that we were trying to use them in. And so we had to put things on hold for long periods of time or redo things. Um, Insects, rain, because this, this van is nine feet tall um, even before you add the solar panels. And so it doesn't fit in a standard garage. So we, I was exposed to the elements uh, for the full year that it took to do the conversion. Now, someone may be looking to take on a conversion like this. Now they might get inspired by your video or some of the other videos out there. What would someone expect to bring something to this level overall cost? So I can tell you, I actually kept a pretty detailed spreadsheet of my expenses. Um, I am a bargain shopper, so I bought a lot of things on sale. Um, I used gift cards when available, but this cost the conversion, so not the van, but the conversion itself cost about $10,000. Um, that was with free labor though. So if someone is you know, looking to take this on and doesn't have, oh, and also I had access to all of the tools. My, that was a really important part. My dad already had all of the tools. Um, and my parents were both willing to use their time. So those would be two factors that you might need to add if you were gonna to try to do something like this. And then would you say that you are full-time, part-time, weekend warrior? What kind of lifestyle are you? So I recently moved in full-time. I've been, um, I think it's actually been a month since I moved in. I had done a few like week-long trial runs um, near my parents' house in Michigan just to kind of work out the kinks and make sure things were working okay. Uh, but I said I'm leaving for winter, and that's why you found me in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> what are the chances? I'm, I'm on a biking trip. I knew yeah. I was going to bump into some folks that have camper vans and RVs here, but what I really love are the homemade DIY ones because that I love seeing all the details. My audience really loves the details too. Yeah, well, I am very thankful for all of the videos and things like um, people like you are doing because I really had no prior knowledge going into this. Uh, I'm a nurse. Uh, this is not my forte, um, so I utilized all of those free resources online, and they're huge if you want to get into something like this. And I know we don't have access to the roof. Uh, what's the total amount of solar up there? So I have two 180-watt panels that are made by Grape Solar, um, and then that Max Air fan, and then a Weeboo cell cellular ext um, extender up, up there. Well, Lindsay, I really appreciate you taking the time today yeah. to give a tour of your awesome 2018 Ford Transit camper van for New Jersey Outdoor Adventures on YouTube. Well, thank you. And thank I you wish you mind. safe travels and hopefully we bump into each other again. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it and we'll see you soon.